Hello friends, my name is Rage Panda one and today we're going to talk a little bit more about the male Samir because there has been some negativity and a little condescension and a lot of people who are very sure about themselves, but I think they might be wrong. Personally, I think that if you can afford to, you should summon on the Samir clan and to prove that on my free to play account with my 11 stones, we're going to do that right stat now. And we got your boy in a legendary. Would you look at that? And the lady. Now this is good because I need copies of the lady because I want to be able to test her. And the only way that's really going to happen is on the free to play account. That's more or less why I'm actually summoning here. But you know, it is what it is. So I already have two or three copies. Now I got a couple more. She's basically in a usable state, but we're going to hope for one extra copy here. Come on, baby. All right, that's fine. She actually fits into a team that I want to talk about uh, in a future video. So she might see some play and then look Look at that, we get one more copy of each. So that's gonna be really good for the account. So over here on our team building screen, I want to talk about what's going wrong with a lot of people's builds and why they feel like, and this is the exact quote I keep hearing, it doesn't matter what he does or how much damage he does because he just dives in and gets himself killed. And my response to that, respectfully, is that actually you are getting him killed because uh, let me let me break it down for you like this this man is a tanky warrior okay even when the whole team is on him he is able to tank it very well he brings a lot of enemy control by reducing the damage that they do Let's look at our renowned champion. So in his giant area around him, he's reducing enemy strength. That means you're reducing the effectiveness of shields, of heals, of all of the damage that people are doing to your teammates, including yourself. And you're doing that by an honorable and a half. And every time somebody dies within that circle, you are increasing that effect. That is pretty huge. Uh, that is pretty huge. Do not underestimate that. People don't think about things like this when they're in combat with somebody because you don't see the effect of it. You don't feel the effect of it, but the effect is there and you would notice it if it was a slower game, if there was less zooming and craziness and if you even paid attention during battles, which we don't have to because we have it on auto and we're watching The Office or something while we're trying to play the game. Now his tornado slash groups up enemies with great effect. It's very easy to get a group of three enemies and with a little bit of strategy, you can increase that number to being the whole enemy team. The skill is very good and it does a ton of damage. His ultimate skill also does a ton of damage and comes with a three second stun and a knockback with an AOE damage on everybody that it hits. Not only that, the stun is specifically targeting the enemy with the highest strength. All of these things are amazing. This guy's very tanky. He makes your team tanky. He does a ton of damage. He enables your team to do damage. So what in the world makes you think that it would be better if he could stand alone and tank the entire five-man team? Are you crazy? That would be horrible for the game. You don't want that. You do not want that. You want a character this strong to have a glaring weakness that you must support with your team so that you can get the most out of the guy. If he was strong enough, if he did everything he did and also he could stand in the back alone and tank the enemy team, that would be called overpowered. We do not want more overpowered powered characters, okay? This guy is balanced through the fact that positioning is important and team composition is important. And I think that he's good enough that you should be trying to use those things so that you can take full advantage of him. So we need to support him so he's not left alone dying. How are we going to do that? Well, let's pretend that we're just standing in our campaign here and I'm just gonna pick the team that a lot of people run. All right, I see this team all the time or something extremely similar to this. So we have our female Lionstone, female Devala, male Tidestorm, a Fulger, I would put male Fulger here, but I only have the female one on this account, and then male Aeson. This is about as standard of a comp as you could get in the game right now. Basically, everybody is using something that is either this or with interchangeable parts that make it this. If you put your male Samir on this team and just expect him to go and do the thing, in most places that you could switch him out on this team, it's just not going to work that well. So it's very likely that the standard team, the popular thing to do right now, doesn't fit that well with him if you just plonk him in there and hope for the best. So let's drop the male Aeson and just put our Samir in there. And likely if you were doing that, you would want him taking the hits instead of your Devala, and your build would probably look 
something like this. So if we think about how this is actually going to work out in practice, number one, we're spreading the team out with the enemies, okay? I see this all the time where people think they got their two frontliners and that one in three means that's where frontliners go. And so you end up with three melee, but you end up with two groups that are fighting and you don't have to have that. You can pull them together and I will show you how in just a moment. So what's gonna happen here is that one or two enemies are gonna run at the female lion stone. One or two enemies are gonna run at the Samir. The Samir is gonna push into the back line having either a group of two or a group of three people. The female Fulger is then likely to start attacking him and he's gonna have three or four people attacking him. And it's about a 50% chance uh, that the female Devala is going to go towards the group of enemies that is not with this guy. In fact, the chances are a lot better. I think the I just feel like the middle road generally likes to go up and to the left for some reason. Not sure if there's any science behind that. That's just how I feel. But the moral of the story is this guy's going to be left alone. And let's think about the ways that this team are going to help him when he gets left alone. Female Lionstone is going to boost his damage. That'll be kind of nice. And Male Tidestorm is likely gonna pull somebody out of the group that's hitting him, but he's going to pull one of the ranged people who are, are probably still just gonna turn around and hit him. So it doesn't actually help all that much. And we have basically nothing in the team that's helping him. He's just back there soloing two to four people. And I would say more often than not, it's three or four people. And then he dies. Of course he dies. What else do you think he's gonna do? He's gonna die. That is what's going to happen. But we can very easily make up for that. One of the easiest ways to make up for that is to use a character that everybody forgot about because he had the same issue, and that is the male Sallyhorn. Male Sallyhorn also pushes people back, and then people feel like he gets left alone, and then he dies. And the same thing is true with him. If you're just supporting him, then you're not gonna really have that problem, and you don't have to worry about it all of that much. Well, now, you're gonna have your entire front line pushing back, and all of these three enemies are going to get pushed back. And what that means is that your female Devala is also going to push back. Now, all of your team is up together, these people will move up into their ranged positions exactly like they would have been before, and you're going to be doing just fine. It's not going to be great for female Fulger specifically, because her line attack wants to go a little bit farther, so you want her to be as close as possible, but I think that you get the point that I'm making. Another person that goes really well with helping this male Samir to survive, that people have just forgotten about, and they don't think about these forgotten characters, is female Strixbane. Don't have one on this account, because it's a newer account, but she instantly teleports to the back, and then he instantly pushes people to the back and your team's gonna be all grouped up again especially if you have somebody like a male Sallyhorn that's also pushing the stragglers into that group again but we can do a similar thing we can just pretend that we're getting close to that and we'll put in our female Yvnayan the reason is because she does a teleporting attack and that's gonna get her to the group when these two are pushing stuff back in the first place obviously having a big nuker in your team is still really good so you can pick pretty much any nuker that you want this could be your female Devala, which I'm not gonna use on this team it could be a Fulger of some kind just about whatever you want and for me personally I just want to see a bunch of people spinning like Beyblades on the screen and so I'm gonna go with the female Ugg girl here she's She's not specifically the best choice for any of this, and she's not providing all that much in the way of making our Samir better, except that we're going to be doing extra damage at the beginning of the fight. But what would easily be better here, instead of this female Uggirl, would be a healer. Because when he's in the back by himself, getting some heals to keep him alive is going to be great. If my Sallyhorn doesn't make it back with him, he's still going to get heals, he'll be fine. Personally, I think male Lume would be the selection that I would want to make for that particular role, because then even if he does die, he's going to get brought back to life more often than not. So I'm pretty overpowered for this battle, but let's just see how it plays out. We're gonna take our two times off. Of course, Sally Horn goes first. You can see our whole team is still together. I'm a little overpowered, so we didn't get to see the whole brunt of the thing, but we're gonna find some more challenging content here to test that out. Now what we would hope is that we're not going to get silenced by the taunt here, so we're just stuck with basic attacks. So we're gonna switch those two around to try to avoid that. And I'm also gonna keep my big nuker over here to try to help to avoid that as well. And of course when we go in here, our team is all grouped up. He's not left alone. Nobody's getting soloed by the enemy team. Everybody's happy. I hate that the arena just doesn't tell you what level people actually are, what their power is actually at. It's so hard to make these videos when it's like that. Now we've got a similar team. I'm gonna think about my positioning, okay? Now, just because somebody benefits from you taking more time to think about what they actually need to do, it doesn't mean that they're bad. And just because somebody is easy and you don't have to think about it, it doesn't mean that they're necessarily better. 
In my opinion, I think that's a more boring playstyle, but it is what it is. Alright, so this guy's considerably higher than me, and we're just gonna run it through and see if the spin to win craziness can do anything good. Best wishes to us, you know? One way that we can make this group even closer also is if we uh, switch around all of our melee so that they are farther away. When we do it like this, it's going to encourage this female Ugril to walk in towards the middle more. Our Sally Horn, if we're lucky, will pull it, will push it forward into where the Lion Stone is, and then the male Samir will push all of that group towards the back. That's, that's the hope and the pray. We did it! We beat a slightly stronger team! Now that's not the only way to support this guy, and this video is getting a little bit long, so hopefully I can wrap it up for you here. I'm not going to show examples of this one because I think that they're pretty self-explanatory, but another thing that you can do with this guy is you can just run him with a healer. And when you're running him with a healer, I recommend you also run him with shields. Uh, male Aeson is great for that job, because Male Aeson targets the hero with the lowest health. If he's rushing in and tanking half the team, he's likely to get that shield, which is likely to keep him alive long enough to get the healing going. And in the case of Male Lume, it'll keep him alive long enough so that if he dies to the enemy alts, he's likely to get revived. And then you're back at square one and you're doing fine. So I would encourage you to not write this guy off and actually give him a chance, because he deserves it. If you don't want to summon because you'd rather have Nagas or Stones for the Devala when they come back around, that's perfectly respectable and I don't begrudge you. But to say that the guy is terrible and not worth a slot, I think, is uh, a pretty narrow view and just not really appreciating all of the potential that exists. So we'll try one more time and see what we can't get done here. Big old stun there. Absolutely love that big stun. Now, I'm set up to have my female Ignis be my huge nuker, and a lot of you people know that the female Ignis is a huge nuker. She does a ton of damage. We are looking at a warrior who tanked almost all of the damage I took in that battle, provided CC, reduced all of the stuff the enemies were doing, and he still did considerable damage. Considerable damage. Now, of course, you're going to have some battles where it looks like he's not doing very much damage. Those battles are when he's not really spinning on that many people, or maybe he gets stunned out of his ult, or whatever. That happens with every character in the game. Don't look at one stat screen and say that it's good. Don't look at one stat screen and say that it's bad. Try to get an average and look at it, and you are going to see that this guy actually, when he's used properly, does considerable damage for somebody who can be used, and should be used, as a frontliner. That's why he's so good. You just need to support him. So I'm not trying to convince you to go spend your stones if you're not interested in them. I just think that it's it's weird to me to see so many people be a little bit condescending about even liking this guy or wanting to experiment and play with this guy when he's so clearly very good. And people keep talking about the clan trait saying, well, what good is that when he just dies first? Well, it's true that the clan trait isn't the best synergy with his entire kit, and I'll give you that. But also, he doesn't have to be the one that dies first. And if he is the one that dies first, he could be the one who's revived first. So, you still have plenty of options, and I think you should explore them. I'm sure I made my point. I'm sure I changed zero minds, but if you were actually willing to sit through that and watch it, then I do appreciate you watching. I do appreciate all of the comments. Man, I have gotten over 200 comments in the past 24 hours. And that has been a lot, so I'm glad people shared their opinions. I should update also that uh, I don't feel like there's anything weird about the companion summons. I've heard a lot of bad stories about it. I've heard a lot of good stories about it. It's about even. I mean, that's just how RNG works. So I feel like if you got unlucky, then that's unfortunate that you got unlucky. I know that I didn't feel like I got very lucky, but I don't think that GOAT Games did anything nefarious this time around. It's unfortunate that we have to actually question that because of their previous behavior. If you are one of the people who is questioning that, then you know what? I don't blame you. I do not blame you because they, especially that Hyrule thing, that was questionable to say the least. So I want to thank you for watching. I have been Rage Panda one and I will see you in the next one.